this is Carrie, your watercolor misfit, and welcome to You Asked For It, where I answer your questions about watercolor, art, and whatever else you guys might want me to answer. On today's episode, we are doing an updated review on the Hydra's watercolor concentrates. I'm going to be talking about the pros, the cons, and what I have also found about this new set that Dr. P.H. Martins sent to me and kind of give you a the lowdown of what is going on with this new set. So stay tuned. As most of you guys know, I received a Hydrus P.H. Martin set, these guys right here, and I got set three around January time and about four of the paints that I had were just really gunky and apparently they had had an issue with a couple of sets during that time and some of you guys even had the same problem. So I contacted PH Martin as you guys actually suggested and they sent me not one but three sets to play around with to kind of get an idea of what these guys actually can do. That's the reason why no video was uploaded last week because usually when I do a review on paint, I paint with it for about a month to two months and really get in on it to figure out what is the pros and the cons of these. And I wanted to basically be unbiased with these and really get an idea of what these guys' true potential is as well as their weaknesses for you guys. Now, just like I said in the last episode, these guys, and this is a huge pro for these, are light fast. That's the main difference between the Radiant line, which is these guys over here, and the Hydrus line. What does light fast mean? Light fast basically means that when you paint with these guys, they are going to continue after you've finished and that paint has dried. Those paints are going to stay that color on the paper for years on end and they're not going to degrade or fade. Compared to the Radiant line, they will fade and they will degrade. I have one painting that I showed and I'll link the video for these. If you haven't seen it yet, for the Radiant line, these paints will fade with light over time. It's not as quick as some people say. I've had this painting up here and I'll pull it down for you guys. I've had this painting here for almost three years and I painted it with these guys right here and it hasn't degraded that much but you definitely can see some of the paint starting to fade especially around this area. So that is just something to be aware of between that's really the main difference between these two. Another difference that I still have noted between these two is with these guys, they're a lot more transparent and you can basically see it straight through the bottle on these. They're really transparent paints and that is one thing that I absolutely loved about these compared to the Hydrus, which is definitely a thicker paint. And that was something that I really had to get used to. I'm used to the Radiant line where the watercolor concentrates were transparent as soon as they went down on paper compared to the Hydrus and I was still, I will say, struggling with that a little bit. But it's just something you have to learn. Um, it's not just something that's like, oh, can't handle this anymore. Most watercolor paints they are opaque in nature and they're a thicker paint so you just have to plan around that and think ahead so it's not a deal breaker but that is something to consider if you have been painting with the radiant line it is an adjustment to go from the radiant to the hydrus all right so let's really focus now on the hydrus line and kind of set these guys aside i'm not going to compare these guys anymore i really want to focus in on these Hydrus paints and really give you the lowdown of what are the pros and the cons for these. I would say one major pro for these, and I've already talked about this, is their light fast. So after you have finished your illustration, you don't have to worry about setting it aside in a dark place to keep those colors up to date. These guys are going to remain true 
even in a bright lighted room. The next thing that I want to say is these guys are great with mixing with other paints. That's another thing that I really like about these. I actually use these and mix them with some of my acrylic paint. Sometimes I do use acrylic, especially acrylic white paint in my paintings if I make a mistake and I want to just kind of coat over it. Well, one thing that's nice is let's say I have a color that I really want but I don't have that acrylic color on hand. These guys actually mixed really well with the acrylic white paint and I was able to produce that color that I wanted and then paint it on paper and it painted just like acrylic paint. So these guys are great with that. They're also fantastic with mixing with my Winsor & Newton paints that I have behind me. They're just fantastic with mixing with other paints and that's, that's that with that. Another thing that I really like about these compared to other traditional watercolor paints is they're very, very vibrant. As soon as they come out of the bottle, you have a bright, vibrant color that can immediately go on the paper. However, if you want more of a pastel palette, I will say you're going to fight yourself a little bit with these. They can still produce great pastel colors. You just have to realize when you're mixing on your palette, how much water you're actually adding, how much water is on your paper. And what I noticed is when I was trying to get more of my pastel colors, I was a lot of times oversaturating the paper because it was an adjustment. Usually what I do with my two paints is I let them dry a little bit and then I go ahead and mix those colors with water and it creates more of that pastel palette that I usually use. With these, even if I let them dry, if I refresh them or reawaken them, they still have that vibrant color. And so it's a matter of adding water to them and really learning how much water to add to get that pastel color and how much water you want on the paper. So it's a water control issue that you're going to have to figure out. All right, let's get into the cons for these. The first con that I noticed right away was that these guys, of course, and I mentioned it earlier, they are thicker paints than what I was used to with the Radiant line. It's not a deal breaker, it's just something that I really had to set aside time and play around with and learn to actually use these paints the way they were meant to be used. So that can be a con if you're not used to the thicker paint of a watercolor concentrate, especially if you're going from the Radiant line here to these, just realize you're going to have to set aside some time to figure out how to paint with them. It's not going to be an easy transition from these guys to the Hydras. That was something that I found I was having to learn and adjust with and it was fine once I figured out and played around with it. I would say it took about maybe an hour or two to really figure out how to use these guys. I was ready to go. So it's not a huge issue, but it is something to keep in mind. The next thing that I noticed, and I actually didn't notice it the last time I was painting, but this time I really, really noticed it. Um, these guys, not all of them, but a lot of them are very staining watercolors. What does that mean? That means when you put the paint on the page, once you lay that paint down, it's very hard to pick it back up again. So if you make a mistake, you're going to have a hard time getting that paper back to a true white. That can be actually a pro as well though. What I realized is there was a couple of times when I made a mistake and I was like, oh, I can't fix this. I'm just gonna have to work around it. Um, because it was staining the paper and I couldn't lift that color up so I had to usually change the composition of the painting a little bit and make it darker. However, there were a couple times when I put the color down and I realized, hmm, this would look really nice on top of this color and if I had been painting with my Windsor and Newton paints, it would have lifted that color up, they would have blended in a different way and because these guys were staining, the color actually stayed 
on the paper and I was able to create really cool transition effects on top without really lifting much of that color up from underneath. So that can also be a pro, I would say. I really started to enjoy using that method. I didn't have to think about how much color was going to come up from the paper after I had already laid it down. I knew once I laid that color down, it was pretty much gonna stay there and there was no way getting it up. So that is kind of a pro slash con that I noticed and it's definitely something you will have to keep in mind when painting with these. Now, I couldn't find the question, so I'm not gonna be able to put it down on the bottom of the screen, but one thing that I have been asked a lot with these is what actually is the difference between my hydrus line and my traditional tube paints or even pan paints. What actually is the difference? I decided to paint last week the same illustration twice. He painted the same exact illustration with the Windsor and Newton tubes and then I painted the exact same illustration with the Hydrus line. So you could get a side by side comparison of what the two actually look like and really see the strengths with my Windsor and Newton um, tube paints and the strengths with the Hydrus line. And what you're immediately going to notice is the hydrus has more of an illustrative design texture to the paper that looks almost like it was printed on paper. It has an ink appearance to it compared to the Windsor Two paints, which have more of that traditional style of watercolor. I really appreciate both, but if you are asking the question, should I go hydrus, watercolor concentrates, or should I go the traditional two paints, this I hope will give you kind of an idea because I really think it's personal preference. Do you prefer more of the stark, vibrant lines of a more of an illustrative feel, or do you like more of that traditional watercolor with the colors flowing into one another differently? It just has a different texture, and I felt like it's really hard to explain that in words, so I wanted to show it right before you on paper. And I think that's the best way for you guys to kind of get an idea of what the difference is between those two. Anyway, I have rambled on long enough. I hope this video is helpful to you in knowing what the Hydrus watercolor concentrates actually have to offer and what really is the difference and what paints maybe you should buy. Should you go the traditional route of two paints or should you try the watercolor concentrates? Anyway, I love you guys. If you like this video, please make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and all the other youtube -y stuff that you guys know so well. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook if you want a question answered for this series. You asked for it, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys!